This conference will now be recorded. So fine, uh, we'll start now. So let's see first what we actually discussed in the last weekend. Okay. In the last session, we only discussed the very basic things like what exactly the scripting languages and programming languages. And uh, we discussed that on what basis we can say whether it is a programming language or scripting language, that part we understood. And then we decided that uh, Groovy is a scripting language. The reason it works based on interpreter. We'll see that how exactly Groovy interpreter is working today. And then we discussed the basic things, how generally in other scripting languages, we are writing the statements to display the output and the same way in some programming languages and how exactly in uh, Groovy. And then later we discussed more about uh, the content, what we are going to cover in the coming sessions. This is what we covered, okay. So what we will see today, since again, today also first somewhat basics we'll see, then later we will move to the concepts. Okay, so we'll see today like uh, Groovy basics. So the Groovy basics means again, we can say like what is exactly the Groovy where we are using it. I'll just briefly go with that. And then so this is the main thing we will start today. So what is Groovy? Just a brief idea and then uh, Groovy history. And then we will see how to write a Groovy script. So this is the basics actually we will see that first. And then later also we will discuss here comments in Groovy. So what are the different types of comments we have? And then uh, how to use that? What is the purpose of the comments? Okay, so these all uh, very basic things we'll see. And also we will discuss here itself how to take input. So first we'll see that, uh, okay, let me write otherwise here. Yes variables so variables we will understand uh, how to define variable or else first what is the use of variable what is variable and what is the purpose purpose of the variables and also we will see the types of variables and also here we will discuss the data types importance okay so data types importance uh, okay, so the data types importance we'll discuss, and then later we'll discuss how to take input uh, from the keyboard. So that is nothing but uh, basically from the user, or we can say from the user, and then also we will see how to check the type of the variable so these are actually uh, you know very much important generally every session we use this how to check the type type of the variable and then how to convert the data type so how to convert the data type so basically this is we generally call it as a type cast okay so type casting we'll discuss and then later we will see the list of operators if we have it so till here we will see so i can say this session is more important and uh, very basic things actually so we'll try to understand each and every you know basic points basically here just a minute Okay, so 
coming to this what is groovy you know we can simply say is that it's a general purpose right it is a general purpose and uh, interpreter and then interactive scripting language it's a just general purpose language we can use in any anywhere but in general many people are using actually what uh, you know instead of java we can directly write this groovy the advantage with this for example if you are writing java java code every time we must need to know the data type so that is what i said here the importance of the data types there you will understand what exactly it is you know if you are defining something java variable every time data type is must so we have to define something like the variable type like int a equal to some value so this data type is must in the java programming language and one more thing while writing java every time we should write class statement because that is a pure procedure sorry pure object oriented programming language java is a pure object oriented so even if you want to print some simple you know hello world statement generally every time we should go with class statement and then we should write it so that will be a generally problem for administrators people for example any administrator if you take again as an administrator if you want to learn this the complete programming style it will be difficult but i want to do whatever the java is doing then is there any option means that is what actually the groovy scripting it introduced so whatever we are doing with java almost we can do but with less time and with less code mostly for we can say this is the replacement for you know java language especially for admins okay so the reason as i said so you don't need to develop you don't need to use any data type you don't need to use any class statement see if it is required you can write the same how we are writing in the java that means two ways here one the same java code we can execute with groovy or you can go with groovy style without using that data type without using that class statements so that is the advantage that means if we have a, as it is java code yes we can run with the groovy interpreter it will execute it understands that code it will execute now i don't want to go entire java style code i want to write my own style which is actually what uh, less code and then without any data types again groovy says that okay you can write the same without any data types as well. so that is why this is simply like we can say it's a general purpose it's a general purpose and uh, interpreter interpreter language we discussed and interactive so interactive means you can directly interact with interpreter okay so we will see how to interact interactive language so now the many uh, different uh, platforms we are using it but based on the requirement now we will try to understand here you know comparing with other languages we already discussed even in the last session so how exactly this java uh, this groovy is actually working and then also here this language is more powerful and uh, the mo main advantage is actually what procedure oriented and uh, as well as object oriented object oriented language that means if you want procedure oriented style yes we can develop it or i want to write entire thing an object oriented style yes we can write that that is a more advantage with this groovy and one more thing actually what it's a basically open source so it came from actually apache apache groovy generally we call it as and then it's a platform independent so that means what like java you can write once and run anywhere so we can simply says that portable language so portable means simple we know like mobile portability that means for the same thing same 
uh, sim we can actually change from one network to another network for example bsnl to airtel airtel to vodafone like that so that, that is a portability so the same way groovy code if we have the same code we can run the same code for example if i write one code on windows environment the same code we can actually run on any other operating systems as well so that is why it's a portable and platform independent right independent so this is a general basic thing and also we need to understand here groovy is a case sense to scripting language it's a case sense to scripting language and the, for the variables whenever if you are defining it it will actually accept for dynamic as well as static so that is why dynamic data type is also see by default it's a dynamic we can say by default it's dynamic data type we'll discuss what is this dynamic uh, data type but also explicitly we can define static static data type also okay static data type also you can define. so this is a very basic things now and uh, coming to the history so history in the sense like the versions so actually it, it started in 2003 this all are just theoretical you can see here just i'm typing here groovy history so <laughs> groovy language history the reason see if you search i can say very less documents we will have for this group not like uh, python not like any other uh, languages okay now you can see here in the wiki just to understand very basic level okay now you can see this is apache one apache groovy is a java syntax compatible that's what i said so whatever the syntax is we are writing we can write as it is java code and you can execute it it works and also you can write the separate style how exactly the other scripting languages we are writing the same way also we can write it so that is the advantage with this now i can see the first upload actually in 2003 17 years ago but no one knows this right so it actually started uh, i can say almost 4 uh, 5 years back the people actually uh, many people started recognition this uh, language and started actually what uh, implementing this the only reason when this uh, devops concepts and uh, more automation came so people actually started to migrate from the difficult programming languages to scripting but there is already python and php perl languages but only advantage with this as i told already many times whenever if you want to run some java code java style code you know in admin level it's difficult with the java directly but we can actually use simply groovy interpreter and we can execute this and we can implement so that is one advantage with this groovy so especially there it it got actually success with uh, comparing with other scripting languages and developers there are different people you can see here the list of uh, developers but now it came different versions like uh, the first version it it introduced in 2013 and slowly it actually uh, 2004 and 2006 between several several uh, versions actually it released but finally uh, i can say from december 2007 the main concept actually we can say simply the groovy 1.1 version actually released and then uh, that version actually see you can you can write using with the groovy 1.1 uh, like uh, even regular expressions and the modules concept more functions they you know introduced with that version so from 2007 only it started 
but slowly it actually uh, 2012 and then 2013 2015 like that slowly they changed versions they upgraded multiple things and finally 2015 it actually 2012 it started uh, groovy 2.0 version and from there you know everything for example other operate other uh, platforms also we can use this groovy 2.0 uh, versions but to 1.1 version or 1 point versions it's very less for platforms but not all the other platforms but 2 point version it introduced uh, like a high level we can say so now the thing is here any 2 point version 2 you know the latest version anything is fine so either you can use 2 point version or 3 version or 4 also fine so we can see actually now uh, the release actually september 26th it, 43 days they introduced on alpha so 4.0 so alpha means we know this is just for testing purpose they introduced actually but not not it actually came to the production environment okay so still we have a 3.0.6 this is a stable release but if you see this is a alpha just for test purpose they introduced but the the thing is actually here we can say that any two point versions or any three point versions will be suggestible and then see uh, there are different extensions we use either you can use dot gy dot groovy dot gsh this, this all we will discuss slowly and the official website for this groovy hyphen lang dot org this is the official website and also see here license see i said so if you want to get the licensed version we can actually get from apache so means apache only it is actually uh, providing so whenever if you get any problems uh, in the groovy while writing the code the backend interpreter level we can communicate to apache and we will get actually what uh, solution means we can raise a uh, cases or we can raise any uh, tickets for them and then we can get the solution from them. so this is just very basic level the history things it's not required just understanding okay so now we will see here i said this is a case sense too and whenever if you are writing any function we should know that function first otherwise we'll get a problem for example println we discussed that println we are using to display something but if can i write capital p then the remaining characters lower cases means no it won't accept that because it's a case sense too and then also it's a interpreter based now we'll see okay now first i'll write here the steps how to write okay main first the important steps here three steps we need to remember any scripting language if you are writing the first one is what is the extension for the script so what is the extension right so So the extension for this Groovy script is I just told here there are different extensions, but we will see we will see this all slowly. But we will just use now dot groovy. Okay. So the extension for Groovy script, just remember like that. Symbol dot groovy. So the Groovy script extension is dot groovy. So that means whenever if you are saving any dot groovy file remember this is must example okay sample dot groovy like this we need to save the file this is must okay this is best practice whatever the language whatever the operating system we are using generally see any unix flavors for example if you are using linux or if you are using any ubuntu or red hat or uh, you know uh, cent os or fedora generally extension not required because the linux operating system it treat any file as a normal text file only without extension also we can execute the code there but i'm saying that best practice always the best practice we should save the file with the dot groovy the reason for example assume i have a 10 files now in linux one particular folder but i want to see only groovy scripts if you are not using the extension we cannot find out which one is the groovy file which one is other scripts or normal text files so it will be always best practice if you are using extension 
then simply we can use ls hyphen l then star dot groovy to get only groovy script extensions and we can see those files so that is generally best practice but coming to the windows this is must without using dot groovy extension we cannot execute the code the reason it will treat like a normal text file so we have to save the file and the second one this is for to execute the code so whenever if you are executing groovy code we use groovy interpreter name so what is the interpreter name so the groovy interpreter name is groovy only groovy interpreter name is groovy so that means whenever if you are executing the code we execute a script like this groovy space script name dot groovy example we just discussed sample dot sample dot groovy right so sample dot groovy we use like this and the third important step here comments how to write okay so comments in groovy so comments actually we have a two different types of comments so one is a single line comment and the second one is multi line comment so whenever if you are writing single line comment how to write that so this is completely different comparing with other languages single line comments and then multi line comments okay for example the reason what is the use of this for example i want to comment only one line so th this is just like a java style we are writing comments here so if you want to write only one line comment and then we can simply use okay we can simply use two forward slashes like this this is a one line comment we will see the example also now i want to comment multi lines that means at a time i want to comment 10 lines or i want to comment at a time 15 lines five lines then we go with the multi line comments so the multi line comment we use see one forward slash and then star and then whatever the comments you can write here okay these are the comments now and then it ends with star and then forward slash so this is for multi line comment for example see assume like i have a 10 lines of code here so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 lines of code i want to comment only one line for example fourth line you can just give like this now if i execute this code it will execute 1 to 10 except fourth line it will execute 1 to 10 except fourth line here the fourth line we commented that now for example the same 1 to 10 lines okay but i want to comment now from the fourth line to okay i'm commenting from the fourth line to till ninth line then we can actually provide like this so that means now i commented four to nine you can also write next line also you can write in the same line no problem it started comments here too it ended here so that means only if i execute this code it will execute only one two three and ten but the remaining all the lines are commented now yeah commenting as the same like in oracle yeah oracle also the same yeah. correct so when we use this for example see i want to execute the code execution is different i want to see only documentation documentation is different so the documentation means what for example see we generally write like this what is the purpose of the code so the purpose always we define purpose of the script i'm writing this script so and so purpose i'm using script to connect the database and get the data something like that i'm using this script for menu purpose i'm using script for to install some application so the purpose we write and then 
we also should write the version so here coming to the version two different concepts we should understand here version means one is actually one is actually you know the groovy version means which version that means which interpreter we are using now so first we should know that i told how to check it so tell me how to check the version groovy hyphen hyphen version yeah so we can simply use i'm going to this you also create one specific directory and then uh, because we will save all the files there so we can simply use a groovy hyphen hyphen version so it will display the version so now i can see i am using 3.0.5 it's a three version any three point version is fine or two point also fine i am using three point version now so this is the way we check the version so it is recommended always to write this the reason for example assume i am using uh, groovy script here on my one specific server but the, the version is three version but assume there are actually servers those servers are very old servers like for example we can say red hat 5 servers or the windows uh, the old version servers and those servers have still groovy 1.1 version so now for example assume i just want to run this particular script i created one package using with groovy and then i want to run this package on all these servers but it will actually check that interpreter and assume see for example if assume like in the 3 point version or 2 point version whatever the writing the script now and in this script having only some features like for example i am importing some module this is possible only with this interpreter means with the 2 point version or 3 point version but now my servers actually having what older versions older interpreters it may not work sometimes so that is why generally it is recommended while writing the script which interpreter we are using at the time of development the script the reason if in case if there is a problem in any specific server the script is not accepting to execute that means the script is not you know accepting by interpreter we can simply upgrade that based on what version actually we are using here that is one flexibility so the version and the second thing we also write a script version so that means what see now for example i just designed some uh, installation purpose maybe in future maybe after 3 months or 4 months i'm going to enhance this so that is generally required you know the script version and also here we specify that a date so when it actually it started when it ended generally we write here also the date so when it started when it ended and again uh, whenever if you are starting some enhancement then again we will write that and then finally we will also add author name so who created this script we generally write like name and then also we write name at the end the mail id okay so now see here everything i define between a single quote but since we have a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 lines almost we can simply go with multi line comment also instead of writing this many lines comments we can simply go with multi line comment also so this concepts actually more important before writing any script now okay we understood what is the extension and what is the interpreter everything but now we will see how to write the script so to write the script first we should open any text editor open any text editor so the first we will discuss on the editors so either notepad or we can use notepad plus plus or we can use edit plus whatever actually any editor generally in uh, linux environment okay edit plus in the linux environment basically we use a vi editor or we use nano editor or pico editor whatever the editor we can use it and the second step is actually what 
once if you open save the file with uh, dot groovy extension and then edit the code means whatever the code if you want write you can write it so write or uh, edit the code groovy code and then again we need to save it right so save the file so this is the first step okay now i'm just writing the same style now i'm creating a one new file so this is my new file here and okay so to display some statements here we have a some built-in function called println so print ln it is a built-in function built-in function which we are using to display the statements or display the whatever you are you want to display we just write with the printer but now the question here can we use this print ln directly like a statement or like a function i said it's a function but generally see there is a lot of differences between statement and function now let's say statement means what you can simply use like this print ln hello world this is a statement that means i'm not using any parentheses so this is a statement style and print ln if you are using hello world within a parentheses this is a function style you know in groovy it accept both that is one more advantage so groovy says that i'm not aware any other programming language i'm new to this no problem groovy says every time groovy means groovy says this like uh, like uh, i'm providing everything as a like english statement that means now if you read this print ln it's a function but just one print ln we should know and then i'm writing hello world so it's like a english statement you can print this hello world but i want to go something okay i'm already aware how to write these functions and all then okay again says that okay you can go with programming style use like a function but see some other languages for example let's say let's take uh, python if you are using print in python 3 versions there are python 2 and 3 versions again python 3 versions they did print as a function that means it's a mandatory we should write between a parenthesis without that it won't work it is mandatory but in python 2 print is a statement you can write without parenthesis also but what we understood here both the ways is possible so there is no problem so we can simply write without parenthesis or with parenthesis but recommendation to go with parenthesis in general because that is the best practice without parenthesis also you can execute there is no problem at it. okay now so based on these above points i'm just writing now some script extension so i'm going to the save as so uh, i'll write based on what you know session today two so i'll write the same way session two underscore script dot groovy this is extension and the save as type should be all types otherwise it will save like a dot txt extension i am saving the file okay now we can see this here so the groovy file extension it clearly says that groovy file and the normal text document is this is the one normal text document. okay i told that print ln we can actually use directly so i'm just writing that hello world and also i'm just writing with parenthesis hello world okay i'm just writing hello world and also one more step i'm writing hello world with semicolon okay now also if you want one more line with the semicolon so now i saved this file again see once if you write 
then after that we must need to save the file that's what we discussed save the file and then how to execute how to execute the code so to execute the code first thing here open command prompt right so first open cmd and then go to the file path so that means for example if you see here i have a groovy file in this path so i came to here so this is the groovy path and then the third one is what execute using with the groovy interpreter name and then script name dot groovy so i am already in the same directory and then you can check one time with the dar command the reason why we are checking you know if you check then you will understand the exactly the extension style for example let's say see sometimes not all the times maybe sometimes there is a possibility for example see now i'm just using s1 dot okay a1 dot groovy and then i am saving it directly but save as type i am using normal text file okay now if you observe here so generally what we understand okay i have saved the file with dot groovy nothing there no problem so i can write the script and i can execute that is how we generally think but if you check with dar you may understand here i saved one file a1.groovy but you can see here there is a .txt extension so this is a big problem so every time whenever if we are saving the file we must need to verify that whether we are saving the file with all types or not otherwise it will go as a .txt this is a normal text file again it should be like this dot groovy it should not be dot groovy dot txt that's what i said so i saved this file like that dot groovy and selected all types and then okay and then i want to execute this code now so we can execute using with groovy and then session 2 underscore script dot groovy now check the output here so i got hello world output all the lines but what we understood here you can see println without parenthesis it executed successfully with parenthesis it executed successfully with parenthesis semicolon it executed successfully without parenthesis semicolon also it executed successfully you know the exactly programming style the exactly programming style is this so every time if you are writing any programming language especially like c language c++ or java if you are using one function the function always the function name then parenthesis start and then whatever the statement you are writing write it and then close and then should end with semicolon so this is exactly the programming style but am i writing every time the same no that's what our wish like what style you want to write you can write it directly you can write like this or with semicolon you can write it but only thing whenever if you are using semicolon we should know where need to use semicolon where not for example if i am writing a conditional statements in the conditional statement if condition we cannot write semicolon there okay if you are writing some loop while then condition semicolon we cannot write so means semicolon not required some statements that means if you are writing conditions if you are defining some function if you are defining some class statement semicolon we should not use there but if you write normal statements like this then semicolon we use so that is why if already aware of that in the programming how we are using that semicolon then there is no problem we can use that if it is not aware very simple this is optional in groovy you can simply ignore that we no need to follow that that means semicolon at all not required you can simply write print ln and then the statement directly that is one thing and the other important thing what we understood here every time it is giving one carriage return so carriage return is nothing but new line so print ln by default it will provide you one new line 
Now I can see here, hello world, and the next line, hello world, next line, hello. Okay, I'm commenting this line now, second line. And then we can see only three statements it will print now. One line commented. Okay, I want to comment here, multi-line. So simply, you can use this, and then at the end, I'm using hash. Now what it will do, it will only execute one line. Okay, so this is the very basic step. And then we understood how to write the, you know, comments and how to write how to write uh, the print element, the different style, and then how to execute it. Now, here, this is called generally script mode. Whatever we discussed as of now, it comes under script mode. So there are three ways we can actually write. Three ways. One is a, okay, I'm just writing the mode here. One is, one is actually the script mode, whatever we discussed as of now, it comes under script mode. So script mode means we write in the text editor. So the code IDE R can use text editors to write this. We used to write this, okay. So that is a script mode, but there is a one more, which is an interactive mode. Interactive mode means we can directly interact with the Groovy interpreter. If you want to directly interact with the Groovy interpreter, you can simply type here Groovy shell. That means just we type Groovy SH, it will go to the interactive mode. The reason, see, for example, I just want to see immediately one particular output. So, for example, I want to add something 10 plus 20. You don't need to go and write the code in opening with uh, some text file and saving the file with a dot groovy and executing in the command from not required. You can simply write this here. Now, for example, I'm just trying to write a println hello here. And then you can see it is printing. That means what? You can execute some small expressions also you can execute any function here whatever you are writing in the script file you can also do here but when we use this generally for example i just want to test something whether okay i'm defining some variable but i want to verify whether this variable is integer or not i don't want to go and write that in the script i want to just check one time then okay you can go to the shell and then we can verify it and then come out from there using with control Z. So this is just for what we can say simply to verify something, we can go to the groovy shell and we can test it and we can come out, but it's for only one time. So we cannot save this only one time. We can see the output and then we can come out from there. But the script mode advantage is actually what, whenever if you want, you can execute it. So interactive mode, Simply, we use a open command prompt and then type groovy sh. So if you type groovy sh, then it will go to the interactive mode. That means we can directly interact with the groovy interpreter. This is script mode, sorry, the interactive mode. And the third one is one-liner also possible. One-liner. One-liner means what? Okay, now for example, even in the script also you can write it. For example, otherwise I want to immediately execute in the command prompt itself. I want to test something. And then Groovy it is providing one liner also. So if you want to test something, see, uh, sometimes we execute directly from the command prompt. So I don't want to write anything in the file or I don't want to go to the interactive mode but I want to write immediately when some specific statement or I want to run some way, something in the command prompt itself directly. Then we go to the one-liner. So if you want to write one-liner, so we should use groovy hyphen E. This is called something like a editor, groovy editor. And then inside this, we write, you know, whatever the function print element, I want to print something hello world here and then close this. Now you can see it will just execute and it prints out. This is a one liner actually. So one liner, we just open the command prompt. Okay, so 
how we are writing open cmd and then type uh, okay so what we are typing here just print uh, groovy hyphen e and then print ln i want to print hello world so hello world okay hello world and then close this this is a one liner code so three ways we write here one liner we can use script mode we can use or interactive mode we can use okay so i hope this one clear now so these are our very basics any questions here in this anyone okay no problem okay now i said we have a variables concept so the variables here there are different types of variables we have but whatever the different types of variables but first thing we should understand what is exactly the variable and then purpose of that variables and then what are the different types of variables we have and then we will understand that how to define the variable so we are not covering all the variables today itself but just we will try to understand what are the different types of variables we have so i said that see here the basic history how to write groovy script and then comments in groovy we discussed and now i'm going to the variables here so the variables part we will we will try to understand what is the variable okay so what is the variable and what is the purpose of the variable so basically see variables we are using variables we are using to store some data but what type of data in groovy the data can be the data can be any data type any data type it can be any data type you can use like a simply we can say integer values or we can use float values or we can use string values or we can use whatever the data type is not so variable symbol we are using to store some data but the data can be any data type here it can be integer value it can be a float value or it can be a string value one advantage with the groovy variables it's a dynamic data type that means at the time of variable declaration we no need to define any data type so in the groovy okay in groovy the variables are dynamic data type that means we don't need to define any data type then what directly at the time of execution okay at the time of variable declaration basically automatically the interpreter itself it will take that type so we'll understand that so at the time of execution interpreter will understand the data type based on the value now this is the important thing actually here see if i am defining some variable i am saying that at the time of execution interpreter it will validate what type of data it is and then based on that internally it will take that data type and then it will print that value 
but that means what this is a dynamic dynamically see the see we can say simply defining a variable is static but data type is dynamic so simple static variables but dynamic data types i hope you got this point static variable means if you are defining something okay as a may equal to 10 this is a one variable i just define one variable a equal to 10 this is a static value is a static but what type of data it is am i am i using any int a equal to 10 no see generally this is actually the important concept we need to understand in programming languages in programming languages we use every time the data type so whenever if you are defining we should know the data type int a equal to 10 float b equal to 2.5 something double c equal to 2.555 something string or care okay care c equal to groovy so this is the way we define in programming language so this is called static data type so static data type means at the time of variable declaration itself as a programmer we are defining that data type so at the time of variable declaration as a programmer if you are defining the variable data type that is called static data type static data types okay so this is a static data type so data types we are defining the variable is a static variable the value we are defining to the variable and then type also static but in the groovy now okay in the groovy in groovy in groovy language i said it's a dynamic data dynamic data type so what is the meaning for dynamic data type now the same variables you no need to define the data type we can simply write a equal to 10 b equal to 2.5 and then c equal to group okay now we have to understand this point here i said i am like in groovy the variable type is actually what the variable type is dynamic at the time of execution based on the value okay now for example if it is an integer value it will take like a int so there is already by default internally the classes it defined there are already defined some classes internally so we have a integer class we have a boolean class we have a float class we have a string class and we have a double class like that there are some classes it define internally in the groovy source code itself so while executing this code what happens it will create one object under that specific class okay now for example what i am saying here i created one variable a equal to 10 what it will do at the time of execution the groovy interpreter it will validate what type of data this is a integer type if it is a just number it will take like a integer and then immediately it will create one object under int class it will create one object under int class and then now for example there is a one more value 2.5 at the time of execution it will check whether this is a one point value or not so this is a point value so 2.5 then it will take this value and it will create one object under float class and the last one is between a double quotes or between a single quote if you write something and then it will take that string this is a string and then it will create one type under string class that means one object it will create under string class 
so this class is already defined it's there in the source code itself but based on the value at the time of execution it will take that type and it will you know create an object and then it will print that value from there but this concept we, again we will discuss slowly we'll understand that anyway object oriented concepts also we have right there you'll understand but i'm just saying how internally it will actually perform so this is the way it will take the data it will check that type and then it will assign one object for that and from there it will print that now assume something like for example okay the question here this is a dynamic data type and static values but i said even java code we can execute using with groovy interpreter but if you observe java code always it will be like these data types but in that case what happened so this is actually static data type so static data type also possible you can define like this now two things here the advantage with this a equal to 10 later i can modify this a equal to python this is possible because i didn't define any data type for this variable a equal to 10 later if you want you can change that a equal to python override this 10 and it will actually assign python value to the variable there is no problem on it any type of data you can assign now to the variable a because that is a dynamic at the time of execution it will take but this 10 you can re replace with any other value this is one advantage but disadvantage is actually what if i want to strictly take a is a integer it's not possible because this is a dynamic if you are directly defining a variable that is dynamic it will take based on the value so if you want to replace this it is possible you can replace it but now coming to this here static if you are defining a variable with the data type strictly and then if i want to replace this n with the python which is not possible the reason is what it strictly mentioned that a should be int type only so this is not possible here the reason already we define this data type as an integer so we cannot write string value for that this is one disadvantage but advantage is actually what okay i want to take a always only int value then okay you can actually since you define that it won't accept any other data type it will only take integer value so this is how actually now we will see that how to define first we will understand how to define these variables and then slowly we will understand what are the different types of variables we have see i'm talking about variable types and data types both are different okay the data types means like integer float string double short like that but the variables basically we have a like a we can say see there are some combination like for example string string it comes under variable type as well as data type also here so some people use these names as it is uh, always like a data type some people only use like a variable types but we just need to understand in general data types means integer float string this all it comes under data types like character double short long this type but variable types again we can say numbers string boolean value and we have a uh, here arrays concept and we have a map concept it all it comes under variables okay i hope this one clear now so now what i'm trying to do i will create some variables first we will see with without any data type and then later also we will check with the data type and also we will understand what is the differences and there is one more thing here but this one you will understand clearly in the function level but i'm just giving it okay so there is a df statement so the variables we can define three ways without a data type with data type with df 
so this it is okay we can say it is a built in function to define to define a variable to define a variable so example df a equal to 10 like this but is it mandatory means now no you just ignore it but also just remember okay there is one more way to define any variable we can simply use df a equal to 10 but we will discuss some point what is the use of this there you will understand but just we are in basics now we will only see that how exactly the variables we are defining it and how we are executing it okay so now i'm going to define something the variable like a equal to 10 and then b equal to 2.5 and then c equal to i'm just writing unit here and then d equal to single code i'm just writing group okay so some variables i define now and the same way now this is actually what dynamic data type now i want to create the same way okay i'm writing here with the data type that means with data type that means simply we can say explicit now i'm defining something in the x equal to 100 and then i'm just defining something bool okay you can also write here one variable something like a boolean value uh, for example is today is Saturday, you can write and one more advantage here. The variable length is infinite. In programming languages, whenever if you are writing variables, the variable length is there is a limit. But here, no limit for any variable. That means you can write one, for example, if you are writing one variable, assume there is a string. You can read entire file data and you can assign to this variable also. Means 100 lines, 1000 lines, no problem. So variable length, I'm not talking about variable name length. I'm talking about the value what we are assigning to the variable. So the variable value length is infinite. Value length is infinite, we can say, infinite. There is no specific rule you know the variable length this many characters so i'm just writing like this here and then here i'm just specifying boolean and then i am writing something like a is uh, today okay holiday you can write whatever the style you want so i'm just writing true again just taking for boolean value and then string I'm just writing some message equal to hi groovy. So here what I did, I defined some data types. Now I'm also defining the variables without a data type, without data type, but using with the DEF. now if you check the same variables okay i'm going to define or else okay we'll try to create some variables df p equal to some variable value 1000 df q equal to some string i'm writing unix and then df and then i equal to i'm just writing some 3.4.4 4.5 okay so here i am saying that there are three ways i am defining variable one is directly without def and the second one with def and the third one 
with the data type. Okay, three ways we are defining now. And now here, I want to print uh, the variables. So to print the variables, it is very simple. We simply use println, that's it, nothing there. So we directly use println. So print ln and then we print the data. So now I'm simply using here itself now. So first let me print this. So print ln, I said you can use parentheses without parentheses also you can write, you can just write A. Or you can also write print ln then open bracket, close bracket A. That is our wish. Both it accept. And then see, I am using just print ln B, I am using print ln C, and then I am using print ln D. So let's first execute only till here. I define some variables and, and remember, okay. So groovy and then session two underscore script dot groovy. So there is a string message. hi groovy there is some error and boolean it is giving some error here he is today holiday so there are some you know the errors if you check here this is something like a unable to resolve the class so it is giving some uh, error okay what i'll do we'll we'll see this again i'm just writing directly with the lower case now So here also, okay. and here one more important thing we need to understand how the groovy script is executing. So the groovy script first it will go on check. It will go on check the compilation part. That means first it will compile. And at the time of compilation, it is just verifying all the syntax errors. So that is what we understood now. So since we didn't actually got any output, it is just printing what all the error messages, compilation time. Now you can see here, I'm just showing that. Okay, now you can see again, we will get that. See, there is an error. So this is actually what first it is doing. The compilation, so compilation time, it is printing that whether this is a, uh, the syntax is perfectly correct or not. So there is some issue, okay. So that is why it is printing the syntax error. So once the syntax errors clear, then it will start execution. So I'm just giving, just for temporary, I'm giving this comment. We will again discuss the same thing. And also here for the uh, string, I'm giving this. Okay, let's first execute first part and we will see that output. And now you can see the output it is printing 10, then 2.5, then Unix and Groovy. So I just defined the variables without any data type and I got output and it printed perfectly fine. And then if you check here, there is a one more variable int x I defined. And then uh, I'm, I want to print this int x equal to 100. So what I'm trying to do, I'm using println x here. And the same way, I'm using println p, and then I'm using println q, and then I'm using println i. So I'm trying to display this all the values now. Now we can see that the value 100 is printing. 1000 is printing, Unix 4.5, this all it printed now. So only thing is, I just defined one integer value. Okay, then I printed this all the values. So we will, we will see that other data types also, but just I define everything without data type first, and we got the output. So this is what I said, in general, in general, always we go with this in general. So Groovy 
it's a dynamic data type at the time of execution it will take that type and then it will print the value so we never go with any data type generally but it should accept it it, it also should work we'll see that what is the problem and all now coming to that now for example i want to see what is the type of this variable first variable so i define something but i don't know what is the type so how it actually understand what is the type of this variable here what is the type of variable what is the type of variable so i printed this value is fine but i want to see what is the type of this variable as so if you want to check the type of the variable and then we use a one function here so how to check that i want to see the type of the variable then we use get class so get class is a one function to check the what is the type of the variable now for example i want to see a is actually 10 but what is the type of this variable so i am using here dot get class okay let's see first whether it is working or not now i can see it is coming from class java dot lang and saying it's an integer and one more important thing whenever if you are executing any groovy code whatever the code you are executing automatically internally it will import some packages so one of the package is java.lang one of the package is java.lang so now i'll write that also what are the default packages it will import automatically this is whenever if you are running any script okay no matter you are just printing one print statement or no matter if you are defining some functions or whatever it is but by default so importing packages by default so this is groovy automatically imports below packages so one is groovy dot lang and then groovy dot util and then java dot lang and then java dot util so we, we actually discuss this all slowly and then uh, it also by default it comes java dot net and then java dot io input output actually so these are the packages by default it will import so that is why whenever if i am checking just get class immediately you can see the type of that variable but from where it is coming means from the java.lang so in the java.lang it defined already this get class so if you am using this get class it will print what type of data type it is and then you can see it is an integer type for example i'm just first printing something hash here uh, 20 times okay so this is just i'm writing means see i want to print output separately here only for first normal regular print functions and then i'm just checking now data types for the variables okay so i'm just writing here print print lm data types for the variables or else okay i'm just writing only just data types and then also i will print again this see here star actually i am using for i want to print this hash 20 times so that is a string repetition operator we call it as so you can just print like this now so i am writing now data types i want to print so i'm just printing this variable a type and the same way i want to see the other variables also 
so there are uh, the variable name is b and then variable name is c and then variable name is is today holiday okay is today is saturday this is another variable now we will check here now we can see the types see now whenever if i am defining this type you know you can see this is first one is a integer but the second one is actually what from where it is coming from the java dot math this is one more uh, you know package by default it comes from there it is importing big decimal so any point values it's a float generally so there are different types of data types actually so in the in the float values itself we have a big data big decimal and then we have for example see if i write one more like a five 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 six and then again i'm running it so it's still printing like a big decimal that means any point value in the groovy it is actually taking like a big decimal any point value so we have generally double and we have short long like that but just it is treating everything any point value as a big decimal and then later if you check i'm just defining what uh, uh, the type of this variable c the variable c is actually string but i want to see that even the variable d type here and the d type is again it's a string only so that means if you define a variable between a single code or between a double quotes that is a string i can see this both are strings only so whatever you define between a single quote or whatever you define between a double quotes that is a string and then you can see this is a boolean now so true or false it is a boolean value so whatever the values we define now so it is just understanding the type but clearly it is showing that using with what get class it display what is the type of the variable right so this this function we use multiple times to see what is the type of the variable and then we can understand okay this is an integer type and this is a flow type like that so i hope this one clear now any questions and also if you are using df the same way it will print there is no difference for example okay now for example here it is right okay whatever you define with df also it will be the same thing now so i am using again here okay let me print only the type of these variables so i am printing p dot uh, get class and then i am printing q dot get class and then i am printing i dot get class data types for the def variable okay. now i can see it is just printing again see integer string big decimal the same stuff but advantage with the df we will discuss in the functions you'll understand but as of now what we understood okay you can define a variable directly and also you can define a variable with df the data type with the combination of data type we will discuss i'm also doubting on this uh, boolean and all we will see that later i'll discuss it but now we only discussed how to define a variable directly now now coming to this we understood how to define a variable but i said there are different types of variables we have okay so the types of variables i'll write here types of variables just a minute
Okay. So, types of variables. So we have a numbers. Under numbers, we have actually what int values and then basically float values. But float values here, we just saw that what exactly the type it is taking. This is taking like a big decimal. And then we do have a strings concept. And then we have a Boolean types. And then we have arrays. And then we have map. These are the types of variables in group. But I'm not concentrating on the different types of variables now. I'm only concentrating just how to define the basic level variable and then how to display that variable and also we understood how to verify that type of the variable. So the type of the variable, whenever if you want to verify, get the class we are using. This is a one function, right? So get class. So it is used to get the, so it is used to get the variable type, variable data type you can say. So the syntax for this variable name, dot get class it will display the type of the variable what type of variable whether it is an teaser value or string value something like that now also we will see one advantage now i said that whenever if you are defining any variable it's a dynamic data type okay i'm just commenting all the lines now here we know multi-line comment i'm just commenting here that's it so at the end already we have star forward slash but i just commented with forward slash then star okay now for example if you see if i add a equal to 10 okay and then b equal to 20 for example i'm just checking a less than b so it will give you the output whether it is a true or false so it is giving like a true. But now the same the same way, what I'm trying to do, I'm writing A plus B. You just try to understand this now. This is, there is a link between this and the next concept now. I'm just writing A plus B and then okay, it is printing now, the output will be 30. So I got output here, the value 30 now. So it is very simple. We just define something a equal to 10 and b equal to 20. And then I added that with the arithmetic operator. Then okay, I got the value. So whenever if you define a static values, this is the way it will actually work. So it means it's an integer value, it's an integer value, we got that target. Now I'm going to define, so just see the simple difference. I'm going to define groovy and then j equal to something I'm writing script. So there are two variables again. I'm using i plus j plus operator. I'm using again and then it will be a concatenation. Now you can see concatenation means combining two strings so how it understood the first one for the as a addition and how it understood second one as a concatenation that is depending on at the time of execution it is validating the data type that's what i said the interpreter at the time of execution it will validate what type of data now if both are numerical value or if both are comes under numbers that means numbers means what it can be either we just discussed it can be either integer value or it can be decimal value which is float value then it understands and it will give you 
arithmetic operator plus which is for addition it will give you that addition value but the second scenario here if both are strings so we know at the time of execution it will validate what type of data so this is a string this is a string and then it will immediately concatenate so the same plus operator we are using for two purposes one for addition if both are numbers one for concatenation if both are strings that is actually plus we can say that comes under polymorphism so means one specific operator we are using for multiple purposes that is nothing but polymorphism generally okay but internally the code it written like that. we will discuss what is polymorphism and you know how to apply that but just to understand i told that plus we are using for two different purposes here now now see what i want to do now i want to print the value 10 but i want to write like this print 10 the variable a is and then 10 i want to print but if you observe now this is something quoting rules we need to understand so the quotes how exactly we are writing okay so this concept we call it as a interpolation see interpretation is different interpolation is different i'm talking about interpolation now. so what is interpolation simple if we get a variable substitution okay variable substitution substitution between a double quotes then we can say interpolation is there so that is, we can say then it's the interpolation or else so it's simple understanding if you can substitute the variable between a double quotes then we call it as an interpolation so for example i'm defining a equal to 10 and then if i print ln then between a double quotes if i get the value 10 here then this is called interpolation if i'm not getting then that's not a interpolation that means there is no interpolation concept in generally that particular language that is how we understand so generally this is the problem with any other languages for example if you write in shell script we have interpolation if you write any variable name between a double quotes you will get a variable value 10 you will get but in python if you write a variable name between a double quotes you will not get a variable value because there is no interpolation in python in shell script we have interpolation but how about here in groovy whether we get or not so so to satisfy this interpolation in groovy it provided one another concept it means now for example see i am using the variable a is a so if you write between a double quotes the variable name it simply says that whatever you write between a single quote or between a double quotes that is just a string okay now i'm just writing here a and then you can see again i'm just writing a whatever you write between a single quote or between a double quotes i told that that is just a string but based on this statement itself we cannot decide there is no interpolation that's what now if we check okay now what i'm trying to do i'm just trying some other way now for example i'm just writing single quote for this variable now let's see what it will print now so what i did actually i define between a double quote single quotes a but still it is printing a only it is not printing any value but i'm trying to print between a double quotes again one more double quotes i'm using for the variable a and again i'm trying to execute now i can see this is error 
so we will discuss this in the quoting rules so we have separate concept for that so single quotes between single quotes double quotes between double quotes not possible so we'll discuss this separately just for understanding i have mentioned here but double quotes between single quote it's possible single quote between double quotes if possible so double quotes between double quotes not possible so how to avoid this these are the things we'll discuss but just okay again back to this variable now so i'm just trying to write yeah banu any questions Can we stop? Sure then. Okay. What I'll do, I'll just write this dollar and then we'll close it. No problem. So just to understand, so I'm writing dollar now, and then see now I'm trying to execute this here. Okay. Now if we observe, we got a value. That means there is an interpolation, but we should know how to get that value. between a double quotes so here it's not a so it will actually print what a only so it will actually it should be with the dollar symbol so this is important concept interpolation is possible in groovy but the variable name should be with the dollar symbol then only it understands as a variable otherwise it treat like a normal text okay so that's all then uh, we will stop so we understood just how to write groovy code and then we understood how to define the variable and also how to get the type of variable and then just slowly we understood what is concatenation what is under what is uh, you know addition and the differences between that and also we understood how to get the variable substitution between a double quotes okay so then we will continue tomorrow same time same link we will see based on again tomorrow if possible to us or else we'll go on and off our or based on that okay any questions banu ma friend lo kappa unnadu hyderabad lo kappa friend call kodi jayina fine andi cheppandi same link ichthe join ayipochu ante kada call session recording chestara sessions anni record chestanu andarki isthanu actually अर्थंकाशन Thank you. Then we will stop now and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Thanks, Manu. Thanks, Avalo. Happy Diwali. We'll continue. Thank you. Happy Diwali. And yes, uh, 